Hey everyone and welcome back to the JKW Woodworks channel. Today we have an incredible build that I think a lot of people are going to like. It's a concealed cabinet that you can put next to your entryway door. And maybe there's going to be a lot of people that watch this video and build one of their own and put it in their own house. Stay tuned to find out more. So for today's build, all this lumber can be found at any of your local lumber stores. It's all dimensional lumber and it's all going to consist of 2x4s, 1x8s and 1x2s. So right now I'm just cutting everything down to length. I included a cut list in the description down below. Right now I want to take the time to give credit to who created this build. The name is Max F and he's got a YouTube channel. I included the link to the video down below in the description. He's the one that actually came up with this build and this build idea. We liked the concept so much when we saw the video that we decided we wanted to put it in our own house. However, we wanted to make some slight changes and modifications, make it our own and make it a little more secure. One of these changes that we made is we wanted to use stain rather than spray paint to paint the project. Stain just gives off a more professional look and appeal and we really enjoy stain over spray paint. Another change that we made was instead of using nails, we used screws. Screws just make it a little more sturdy. Nails, not so much. We noticed on this video that when he was opening the cabinet door, the door itself was really flopping around and we wanted to make sure that this would last and be durable. The biggest improvement that I think we made was we added a fingerprint scanner and lock to the cabinet door itself. If you're going to be storing a firearm or any weapon of sort, you want to make sure that the area is secure and that only you or the people you want access to that area have access to that area. The goal of this video is not to disapprove or to knock Max F's idea. We thought it was a great concept and we wanted to put it in our house. We just wanted to make some of our own improvements and changes to it to suit us. So as you can see here, we're planning down all our lumber and cuts. As you know, working with dimensional lumber, it's not always going to be perfect. There's going to be a lot of errors, flaws. It might be twisted or have a knot in there somewhere. So planing really saves you a lot of hassle in the long run if you can get it done early. So right here I'm going to be using my homemade jointer to really square up the edges on the 2x4s. If you want to learn more how I made this jointer or interested in how it works, I included the link to that video in the top right of this video. So let's take a look at all our cuts that we made so far and see what we got. So right here I'm just going to be pre-assembling our product with all our cut pieces. The main reason why I do this is just to make sure there's no errors or if I have to make additional cuts or maybe replace something. It also gives me a chance to look at the pieces and determine which side I want facing out, which side maybe I want facing in, depending on the boards and their flaws. With my trim router, I'm going to be adding a 45 degree chamfer to some of the pieces, mainly the 2x4s and the lid to the cabinet. I'm also not going to be necessarily adding a chamfer to all the sides just the sides that are going to be facing out and that I want having a chamfer on them. Now 
Now for the top piece of the whole cabinet, I'm going to be using a different bit rather than a chamfer bit. It's called a Roman OG bit, and it's something that gives it a more fancy kind of stylish look that I thought was going to look amazing on the top. Now I'm going to be adding pocket holes to that long 2x4 that we cut. That's what we're going to be using to attach the 2x4 to the other 2x4s for the sides. And I want to make sure that both of them are on the same side, that way they can be hidden in the back when we're all said and done. Here I'm going to be taking that box that we pre-assembled, I'm going to be flipping it upside down, and then I'm going to be pre-drilling holes so that I can attach the 1x2s to that 1x8. Once I got all the pre-drilling done, I moved on to sanding. Unfortunately, I lost all the footage of me actually sanding, but I wanted to let you know that I started out at 80 grit, went to 120 grit, then 180 grit, and then moved on to 220 grit, just to finish it off and make sure everything's smooth and nice to the touch. Now that all the sanding is done and everything else is prepped, I'm gonna move on to preparing for the stain. I'm going to be using mineral spirits to clean up the pieces and prepare it for the staining process. Mineral spirits does a fantastic job of getting the piece ready and making so it's not so blotchy, especially when you're working with pine. Today I'm going to be trying a new stain on this build. It's actually Old Master's Red Mahogany Gel Stain. Now this stain was recommended to me by my woodworking mentor. He told me that this was by far the best stain that he's ever used. The gel makes it so easy to wipe on and wipe off, not having too much of a mess. You get the exact color that you want by adding more or wiping off too much. It's a little pricey, but as you can see from the finished product, it works out great and I love it. I'm absolutely a huge fan of it and I'm going to continue to use this stain and other stains like it. Now that the staining process is done, I'm going to be using some spray shellac to give this wood project its final finish. I really love spray shellac because it's very easy to apply, not very expensive, and it leaves a great finish. It's also very easy to use in the sense that I don't have to sand in between each coat, and it dries quickly so it doesn't take too long to complete this process. Now I'm going to start assembling the box. I'm just going to start screwing in all the 1x2s with the pre-hole drills that I already made. I'm not worried about covering up these holes because it's going to be on the back side of the box. When it came to attaching the hinges to the 1x2s, I ran into a slight problem. So the hinge itself is actually a little bit bigger than the 1x2. And something that I noticed in Max F's video is that he used his table saw to cut a groove in the 1x8 so that there'd be enough space for the hinge. However, since I've already stained everything, I just felt like I could use an oscillating tool or my multi-tool to cut a little slot for the hinge, and it worked out.
So as you can see here, I'm opening and closing the cabinet door and it's still floppy and loose, even with screws. So I'm going to be attaching the 1x2 with the other 1x2 with another screw on the side and hopefully that will secure it down. So now that the box is complete, I'm going to be attaching the side 2x4s. I drilled some holes in the 1x2 on the sides so I could attach it to the 2x4. It was a little tricky for the ones especially close to the hinges, but it all worked out and everything held up. Now that the 2x4s on the sides are secured, I'm going to be attaching that lower 2x4 to those other 2x4s. I'm going to be using those pocket holes that I drilled earlier to do so. Now when it comes to hooks for hanging up coats and other items, you can go to your local hardware store and purchase a couple. They're not very expensive or you can make them yourself. Either way, it works out great and it also just adds a lot to this piece. Just make sure that you find the center, you mark it out, you evenly space, and it's very simple to install. So now that everything is pretty much done on the cabinet itself, I'm gonna add the final piece, which is the top portion. I'm gonna be using my countersinking bit to drill two holes into the two by fours and attach them with screws. I'm then going to use some wooden dowels to plug up those holes, sand them down, stain them, and then finish them as well so that you'll never know that they're there. Now that the cabinet is built and finished, it's time to add the fingerprint scanner. To do this, you just need to mark out where you want the scanner to go drill out a hole and drop it into place. Unfortunately, I lost the other footage of me attaching the box to the latch. I included photos of the project itself and where I attached it in the piece. Now we're on to the fun part of the video where I get to attach a weapon magnet to the cabinet itself. I want to do a disclaimer for this part and the rest of the video. I always clear and check my weapons to make sure they're safe and secured. We don't want any accidental discharges or any accidents occurring when we're shooting this video. The main importance when buying a weapon magnet is to make sure that it is rubber coated. You don't want metal on metal. That's going to damage your firearm and it's going to scratch it up. The final thing we're going to do to this cabinet is we're going to set up some T-slots. T-slots are going to allow us to mount this cabinet to surfaces, walls, etc. They're incredibly easy to make and they work very well. The most important thing is make sure you mark out everything, the distances, the depths. Make sure everything's the same on both sides, otherwise you're going to have an uneven cabinet. Also when you're using your router, make sure you have a straight edge to guide because your router can sometimes lose control. Something that Max F did in his video is he added a welcome sign to the cabinet, which I thought was a pretty good idea at first. However, reconsidering it, we decided not to since we had the fingerprint scanner and there wasn't enough space to add a welcome sign. And you really don't want to draw a lot of attention to a cabinet that has a firearm. 
This is the mirror that was gifted to us. We really like it. It's right next to our front door. It's a great little spot to put keys and other things. However, we're going to be replacing this mirror with the cabinet we just built. So let's look at the final product. Everything looks great. It sits flush against the wall, which means our T-slots worked out well. It's steady and secure, which is also important. The coloring scheme is awesome. I love the color. That stain really worked out. The lid opens up with ease and closes and locks securely, which is exactly what we wanted to do. And the best part about this whole design is it's very simplistic in nature. Simplicity is great because you don't want to draw a whole lot of attention, especially to areas that may or may not have possible firearms. Now I'm going to test this with a couple firearms that I have, ranging from subcompact to full-size firearms. These are very common firearms that people will have in their households. So let's see if they fit. So let's start off with the smallest pistol, which is the Glock 43X, or what I like to call my baby Glock. It's obviously a very small pistol and is easily concealed, and it comes out easy as well. The next pistol we have is a little bit bigger. It's my Smith & Wesson 22. This one as well slides in very easy. It's easy to conceal and pops out when you need it. So the last pistol that we're going to try to conceal is a Glock 17. It's a full-size pistol with a weapon light. This is what I like to call my daddy Glock. As you can see, the lid to the cabinet does not want to close, and that's because the weapon light is hitting that box with the latch. So I was able to remove the weapon light, and the lid was able to close, which I was really surprised because it's a full-size pistol. It's a big, big boy. But I was able to remove and put the pistol in with ease. Now hopefully it's not an everyday occurrence that you need to open that and grab a gun or a weapon. But something you can do every day is hang up a jacket like so. Very easy and very practical. Right here we have a little demonstration just to show in case you need to access a weapon very quickly how fast can you do it. And the answer is very quickly. Thank you for watching this video. And since you watched till the end of this video, you obviously liked the video, please hit that like and subscribe button to help us spread this content around to more people. We really appreciate it. That subscribe button is free. It doesn't cost you anything except it takes a second for you to hit that button. Also, let us know in the comments below if you enjoyed this project. I really enjoyed making it and I want to make more projects like this. And I'm always looking for future projects or ideas. Thank you very much.